Wildcats is on the air, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me for another episode. This is episode 212, and we are on the penultimate show before Revelations 9. This is D-Wall here with you on commentary, and what a night we have for you. We have a massive main event, a rematch from episode 206 coming up tonight in our main event. Marie Connor will defend the Queens of Wrestling Solar Star Championship against Bad Amy and there is no outside interference. We will have a winner. We will have a champion by the end of this night tonight. But that's not all. We also have some qualifiers for Revelations 9. At least the last qualifier for the Rising Star Championship Dead Woman's 5 tonight. It's going to be an awesome show and we are going to waste no time kicking it off with some action here as we are going to get set for singles competition and if you hear the music you hear the music of Nillen coming out to the ring someone who has uh, not been in the ring very much this season however she is looking to rebound after quite a I wouldn't say disappointing season, but this year has not been her year in, in a lot of people's eyes. A lot, a lot of what people expected. Of course, she knows she's got to be very happy about the fact that her friend Faith is now in the World Championship, the Wildcats Championship match at Revelations 9. She will be in a triple threat match if you haven't seen it already with Faith Connors going in with Destiny Williams and the champion Ovana Morgan at Revelations 9 for the Wildcats championship. And as much as Nillen would love to be in a title picture of her own, she is not anywhere close to that right now if we want to be blunt about it. But the woman she's facing tonight very much is in a championship picture. And this is going to be her singles debut as well. Here in DCA at least. And there she is. Kenzie Cray. Former Three Lions. Goddess champion. Their top title over there. A member of God's Song. And a woman who will be in a fatal four-way match at Revelations 9 for the Fever Championship. And also one of the most dangerous women in virtual wrestling. Kenzie Cray, like I told you at I told you this before. I know it's hard to believe, but Kenzie Cray is a very dangerous woman. She is a threat to anyone that she steps in the ring with. She is a threat to any championship she decides to go after. And it seems like now her target is set on the Fever Championship. And she will be in the ring with Miyako Yukimura, with Suzuka, and with the champion selena zeta at revelations with the title on the line so it's going to be very interesting to see how kenzie does in a fatal four-way environment as Nillen goes in for a cover and not even a one count off of it like i said tonight we also have the final dead woman's five qualifying match we will round out the field tonight we will find out who will be joining oh wait a minute schoolgirl but Kenzie's feet or excuse me Kenzie's hands are too close to the ropes Kenzie trying to fight back now nope kicks to the midsection by Nillen Nillen nope kicks by Kenzie 
Right to the hamstring, and now look at this. Just body shots by Kinsey. Trying to wear her out, and then gives her a knee right to the jaw. One, two, no. But yes, we will round out the Dead Woman's Five tonight. Heather Ray is already in. She's the Rising Star Champion, obviously. Nia Mishimura has it qualified. Kim Possible has qualified. And then on the last episode, Maxine Rose qualified. And we will have the final qualifier here tonight. Six women who have all had their opportunity to qualify, chosen at random, will be in a six-pack challenge tonight. The winner will be the final woman in that qualifier for the Rising Star Championship. As Kinsey has got Nillen by the throat and it gives her another body shot. And those body shots have really been paying dividends and then the boot to the head for good measure. Two count. And again, Nillen doesn't keep it doesn't stay down for three. But yes, the six women in that match tonight will be CJU, Chloe Jane Orrick, Raven Sarian, Yuki Mori, Abby Lawrence, Sarah Miller, and Sophia Yale. Those six women will all compete. The winner will be in the Dead Woman's Five at Revelations 9 for the Rising Star title. As now Kinsey with a Dragon Sleeper locked in. But Nillen able to roll her way free and kicks her right in the back. And then an instant Geary right out of nowhere. And Kinsey's on the back foot now. And that's a rarity to say in a Kinsey Cray match, but Nillen is doing the smart thing and taking it to her right now. Cover off that stun gun. Only a one count. Still, Nillen can't get a sustained cover on her. But she's doing the smart thing, just staying on her. Also tonight, oh, wait a minute. Hold that thought, there's a crossbody by Nillen. One, and again, she only gets a one. But tonight, also, we will find out the final team in the four-way ladder match at Revelations 9 for the tag team titles. The Succubus Club, Betsy Chairshot and Amy Lynn will be defending against Godsong, against the Lotus Collective, and against the winner of our four-way later tonight. Two off the Tiger Suplex. Only gets two. And now Nillen off the ropes. But for the crossbody, doesn't connect. And Nillen in trouble. Back elbow by Kinsey. Kinsey went for the boot. Boot in the midsection. Lariat missed. Big right hand sends Kinsey down. It will be the Bombshell Club, the Punch Girls, the Hated Gates, and the new team of Reiko Hinamoto and Sakura Hagiwara in that four-way tonight. Two, no. The winner of that four-way will be in the four-way ladder match at Revelations 9 for the tag team titles. That just shows you how deep our tag team division is here in, on Wildcats. There's that drop kick. Swatted it away and then a lariat. Now Kinsey with a boot to the head. And now just stomping on her. No remorse at all with Kinsey Cray. And I wouldn't expect any. As now look at this. Oh, the forearms right to the back of the head of Nillen. And this is what I'm talking about. Kinsey Cray has made a career out of hurting people. She has made a career out of making people suffer. And she enjoys it too. Northern Light Suplex. Two. No. If you've seen any of her work in Three Lions, Super Network TV, you know what Kenzie Cray is capable of. And if you don't know what Kenzie's capable of, you're seeing it first hand right here and right now and she's just giving her the full Nelson into the turnbuckles and now look at this a choke 
And Ashley's not going to do anything about it. She values her career. She doesn't want to get hurt. She just started this season. She does not want her career to end before it really gets started at the hands of Kenzie Cray. And now she's got the Dragon Sleeper locked in again. Trying to wear her out. And again, Nillen able to escape it. But you got to think the damage is clearly being done. As now, look at this, Nillen. Big Pele kick. But she's got to stay on Kinsey. She cannot allow her to get a second wind here. Now on to the most dangerous rope in wrestling. Brett's rope. Blockbuster. Very nice done. Very nicely done. One. Two. Finally got a two. And only that. But she's getting some progress. She's got a two count. And that was more than she had gotten this entire match so far. Kick to the midsection. Nilla now. Irish whip. On to Kinsey. Oh, no. Again, Kinsey able to duck underneath. More kicks to the hamstring. And what a backhand. Send her down immediately with that backhand. And now Kinsey, look at this. Again, just continuing to pour the pressure on. More forearms to the back of the neck of Nillen. And this is what Kinsey Cray is known for, as I said before. She does not care about your feelings. She does not care about your health. She does not care about your welfare. She cares about winning, winning championships and hurting people. She's the queen of violence for a reason. One day that, that Kenzie Cray Lacey Adams match is going to feed families. You heard it here first. And Kenzie now sending Nillen back inside the ring. And I hope that Selena, Suzuka, and Miyako are watching this closely because this is the woman you're going to have to contend with in that four-way match at Revelations. There's a schoolgirl again by Nillen. Two. No. Turns it around on her. One. Two. And all oh, two and a half. Two and a half, but not enough. And now an O'Connor roll by Nillen. Doing anything it takes to get a victory here. And I don't blame her. Uh-oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Shots to the midsection. She's been working on that midsection all match, and now it's the Lariat again. She has been working on that midsection the entire match, and now Nillen in trouble. There's a senton. Cover. One, two, and again, Nillen kicks out. But you have to wonder how much more Nillen has left in the tank. She's been taken to through this entire match by Kinsey. And now, Nillen with a jawbreaker trying to come back, and there's a big right hand. Nillen now, Arabian press. One, two, no, again, another kick out. But clearly, Nillen has finally found a groove and is working with it. And now look at this. Just working on the arm of Kinsey Cray, which is a smart idea. Trying to take the power away. Nillen now with a lariat off the run. Went for the elbow. Kinsey rolled out of the way. But you could tell she's still hurting. Now, drop kick. No. Kinsey got out of the way there. Kinsey with a Larry to the back of the neck. And she's been working on that too all night. And now, wait, no. Off the ropes. Cross body. She got it this time. Two. No. And I don't think Kinsey. I don't think Kinsey expected this amount of fight from Nillen, or maybe she did. Kinsey from behind. Look at this. Regal Plex with a bridge. 
two, and no. I think Kinsey really expected that this match would have been over by now, but Nillen has not let Kinsey have that at all. Look at that. Over the ropes from Nillen. Nillen is not an easy match for sure. And now look at this. Kinsey trying to run in. Gets hung up on the top rope. And now Kinsey's in trouble. And I didn't expect to say that through this entire match. Look at this. this fakes her out, but tried to roll her up. And again, Kinsey's hand all over the bottom row, under the bottom rope. And now again, going back up top. Look out. Went for the drop kick again and gets a boot for our troubles. And now, uh, no. Nillen kicks in the midsection. More right hands. Nillen is doing everything she can to win this matchup. And now she's giving body blocks and body shots, I should say. Nilla now. Kinsey, look at this. Schoolgirl of her own, but nope. Nilla rolling through. Nilla, look at this. What a boss man slam. Did not expect that. But hey, whatever works. There's a face buster. Roll through face buster two and again. Only a two count. But you got to think she's getting closer and closer. Nilling up top now. Whatever she's got to do, she's got to do it now. And she missed the frog splash. And gets another boot that sends her spiraling to the corner. And now another choke by Kinsey. This match did not... This match has not gone the way Kenzie thought it would. Like I said, I'm pretty sure she thought this match would have been over by now. Oh, my God. There's the Shadow Wizard. Shadow Wizard by Kenzie. And Nillen kicks out again. Again, I did not think Kenzie thought this match was going to last this long. But it has. It's not like Kinsey hasn't been in long matches before. She has. It's not like she hasn't fought tough competition. She very much has. But at the same time, Nillen is not a Jasmine. She is not one of those tough, you know, and this is no disrespect to Nillen, but she has not been at that main event level like Kinsey Cray has, and that's just because of the competition here on Wildcats. She's not been able to break through that. Kenzie Cray has done that in other promotions. She has been to the top of the mountain and back. She's fought people like Ashley Goldman and Jasmine and, and tough competition like that. She knows what it's like. Nillen with the remix. She got it finally. One, two, no. But Nillen's got to stay on her. And now another crossbody. Two. No. And this is the closest we've seen Kenzie to defeat since she came into DCA. It might be only a matter of time if Nillen can pull this off here. Now kneeling up on the Brett's rope as Kenzie's trying to get back to her feet. And now look at this. Went for the blockbuster. Kenzie just took a few steps back. Nillen again trying anything it takes, but you see those body blocks not helping. Oh, what a shot right to the head and then a boot to the head. Nillen is down. Off the ropes. And oh, went for the went for the Shadow Wizard again. 
and Millen was able to block it. And now, Millen up top. Kenzie gets an elbow as she's standing up. And now up top again, Nillen looking to finish it. Frog splash into the cover. Two, and again, Kenzie gets out at two, and Nillen is beside herself right now. I don't think Nillen knows what else she can do to put Kenzie away. Went for the Insiguri again. Boot, block, headbutt. And now Raven pressed. No. Kenzie was just a little bit further away than she had thought. Missed the boot. Back elbow. Lariat. Ducked under. Off the ropes. Oh my God. What a discus boot by Kenzie. That took Nillen out. And now. Oh man, what a what a right hand. No, Nillen countered. With a back elbow. Nillen, no. Got a kick in the hamstring. No, another right. No, another back elbow. Back and forth we go right now between these two. Kenzie is down. Nillen went for the forearm. Couldn't get it. Nillen up. Went for the knee. Got a knee in the midsection by Kenzie. Kenzie now. More body strikes. Just wearing Nillen out. No. Nillen with a shot to the midsection. Nillen. Big right hand. Ashley didn't like it. But whatever it takes. I went for the Insiguri again. Doesn't connect. That's the Shadow Wizard out of nowhere. Shadow Wizard out of nowhere. And now Kinsey. Oh, no. Oh, no. She's looking to end it now. She's done playing around with Nillen. And she's about to show her why. Raven's kiss. And Nillen is down. And Kinsey is not done. She's picking her back up. Gonna send a message to the others in the Fever title match. There's another Raven's kiss and it is over. Kinsey Cray with the win. If you didn't think Kenzie Cray was a threat before, she is definitely a major, major threat to anyone in that three in that four-way match at Revelations 9. I don't know. We may be looking at a new fever champion at Revelations 9. I'm just saying. As you see, the match is set. Selena Zeta defends against Kenzie Cray, Miyako Yukimura, and Suzuka in a fatal four-way match where Selena doesn't have to be pinned or submitted to lose the championship. And this woman right here, Kenzie Cray, could be the next Fever champion if she continues on this dominant streak she's on. Congratulations to Kenzie as she builds momentum heading into Revelations 9 with a win here tonight over Nillen. If I leave anything on your front lawn, under your porch, on the side of the highway, where you can store all that stuff my way down here at Jones Big Ass Truck Rental and Car Storage. Now, I know y'all got stuff at your house that you don't need no more, you don't want. You know you ain't gonna use that printer. Why keep it all around your house? Bring it down here to my house. You ain't the Dukes of Hazard. You know you gonna use that ugly yellow luggage. You don't need all this crap. What you gonna do with this? This is not, what it, in my yard. I don't care. I'll store this motorcycle in that van for you for $10.99 a month. You got old tires. They charge you $3 for that old tire. You can rent a truck, you can store a car, they don't care, bring it on down here. You ain't got to put that old tire for $3, for less than that, hell, for you, for $3, they gonna charge you, I do it down here for a buck fifty, down here at Jones Big Ass Truck Rental and Storage Facility. Now friends, you may ask yourself, how in the hell can he store this stuff for such a cheap price? Put this in a box, mark it for you, put it away, seal it. The fact of the matter is, I'm pretty drunk right now, and store it. 
and this is a drunk discount sale down here at Jones Big Ass Truck Rental and Car Facility. You got an elephant, I got space. Send me smoke signals. You got weed, and I'll store anything you want. Go ahead and give me a call or find me on them internets at www.jonesbigasstruckrentalandstorage.com. That's J-O-N-E-S, Big Ass Truck Rentals and Storage.com. This is a bus. You know how big a bus is? Kenzie Cray making it perfectly clear she wants the Fever Championship. And she's going to do anything it takes to get there. That fatal four-way is going to be very, very interesting. That's for sure. But right now, we're getting into our next matchup as we will determine who will move on to the Dead Woman's Five for the Rising Star Championship at Revelations 9. And here comes the first entrant in this matchup. A woman who debuted just a few months ago, CJU Chloe Jane Oric making her way to the ring. And though she's been unsuccessful so far in DCA, she's also not been pinned because every match she's been in so far has been a multi woman match and they've all revolved around this Rising Star Championship. And this could be a big night for her. If she can win this match and move on to Revelations 9. The fans have taken to her. And she's been very impressive in the outing she's been in here in DCA. But she's got five other women she's got to deal with here tonight. So it's not going to be an easy task. And we await our next entrance. And here's a woman who has made no bones about it. She wants to earn her spot at Revelations 9 this year. Yuki Mori making her way to the ring. If you remember last year, Oseko and Yuki Mori had that excellent match that a lot of people criticized for because of the fact that it was just quote unquote given to Yuki Mori because she's Osei, you know, she's Oseko's daughter. This year's different though. If Yuki Mori wins this match, there would be no question about it. She earned her spot at Revelations Night. And I'm not saying that I agree with the people who say that Yuki Mori was handed a match at Revelations last year. They have every right to think so. But at the same time, this year, Oseko hasn't... I don't think Oseko's competed except once all season here in DCA. Yuki Mori has been here, and she has been fighting every, all this season, and now she's got one last shot to earn her way to Revelations and earn her way to the Rising Star title that she says she wants to win. But if she doesn't win this match, that's it. So, I guess we're about to see if Yuki Mori can earn her way in. She's got five other women she's got to beat, though. This is a whole different ball game than her previous matches. She's got multiple people to defeat, and the last time she was in a 
multi-woman match, she lost, which is why she's in this last chance tonight. She got chosen at random, so she should feel lucky just in that. And here comes a woman who's already got some momentum behind her, Sarah Miller, who won her match on the Horizon Special before Gateway to Heaven. So she's got the most momentum heading into this match. One of the most popular women here on the Wildcats roster. And uh, I'm just going to leave it at that. It's definitely for her wrestling ability, though. Let's sh I'm just saying. I'm, I'm being honest here, folks. This is just what I've heard. I've heard that there's other reasons, but I don't know those. And I'm not going to speculate because I don't want to get in trouble. So... Sarah has a shot to go to Revelations 9. Like I said, she's already got momentum behind her. Behind her. <clears throat> anyway, she's got a lot of momentum going into this match. And here comes entrant number four. A woman who also has some momentum behind her. Because on that same Horizon special, this woman, Sophia Yale, teamed up with Marie in a successful tag team matchup and now she's here wanting another shot at the rising star title or at least to qualify to get there her team with Marie was her idea Marie didn't really like it too much the idea of it but they ended up getting the win I don't know how what the future of that is but Sophia, still one of the newest members of the Wildcats roster that debuted this season. We await our fifth entrant. A woman who probably has, you want to talk about momentum. This woman probably has the most momentum out of everybody in this, in this matchup. Raven Sarian, who, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be wrong, but I don't think I am, she still has not been beaten in DCA. She has not been pinned or made to submit in this, in this entire season. And the fact that she has not been a challenger for the Rising Star title yet is baffling to me. But she still has not taken a loss. So. She might have a shot here. It wouldn't shock me. If Raven Sarian walks out of this ring. As the fifth and final entrant. In that dead woman's five. And now. By process of elimination, our sixth and final entrant. Another one of the most popular names on the Wildcats roster. And a popular figure in the Armbar Air Society, Abby Lawrence, back in DCA. A woman who has made no bones about it. She's been very popular in DCA and also she's made a quite an impression since she came in. And now she's got an opportunity. She came close in her qualifier but was unsuccessful. But she's got one more opportunity here tonight to make it to Revelations 9 to that dead woman's five. She was in the match, by the way, that Kim Possible was in. Kim Possible qualified by beating, by pinning Yuki Mori. CJU and, and Abby Lawrence were not pinned in that match. So. But that was a four-way. This is a six-way. You got two other women in this thing. And here we go. 
Six women, one match. Winner goes to Revelations 9 and the Dead Woman's 5 to join Mia, Mish uh, Mia Nishimura, excuse me, Kim Possible, Maxine Rose, and the champion Heather Ray, who I'm sure is watching very closely. Cover now by Sarah, trying to end this early, which is a smart move. Speaking of Heather Ray, the Rising Star Champion will be on the show next week. The final episode of Wildcats before Revelations 9. It's going to be a big show to, on the next episode. Heather Ray will be in action. Our first time seeing the Rising Star Champion in action since she won the title from from uh, Nova Kane. And this action is going to be too close to too uh, too close to call here. With so much action going on, so I will call call it as best I can. But also, we got another. Oh, look at this. Got caught. CJ, you got caught from that German by Yuki Mori. And now Raven with a shot in the corner. And now look at this. Into a tilt-a-world DDT. Very nicely done. Sophia now. It'd be, a, I'd say, an upset if someone like Sophia Yale got into this match. Because... She is the newest out of all the women in this match, other than Sarah Miller and CJU, obviously. Now it's Sarah and Yuki Mori fighting on the outside of the ring. CJU and, and Sophia going at it. And now CJU's going after Raven with a head scissors. Sophia coming back. There's a suplex on the floor by Sarah. It wouldn't, I was, I didn't, I, you know, you had to expect it wouldn't take long to, for Sarah to start throwing the suplexes around on the, on everybody. Arm drag by Sophia going in for a cover. Everybody else is on the outside. That was a smart idea. Oh, wow. Raven quickly with a blockbuster. The moment, the moment CJU kicked out, she got hit with a blockbuster. Raven now snaps suplex. And then gets a chair to the back of the head while Sarah with a suplex. And then she gets suplexed. Sarah getting a taste of her own medicine by Abby Lawrence there. Now Abby with a code red on the chair. I told you this is going to be a crazy match, but this is all for a shot at the Rising Star title at Revelations. You got to do whatever it takes. You got to fight like your life depends on it. Like I said on takedown. Because all these women want that opportunity. And and Yuki Mori's got the chair. I'm pretty sure Oseko would not enjoy Yuki Mori using a chair for an advantage. However, this is a no disqualification. No count out. So she's in within the well within the rules to do whatever she needs to to get to Revelations. Irish whip onto Abby. Oh, Abby broke through, but not there with that head scissors. Chair again by Yuki Mori and he uses it on Sarah. It's now Sophia was trying to look for something. Yuki Mori now, look at this. Yuki Mori with a Pele sending Sophia down. Northern Light suplex by Abby, but it's quickly broken up. And now look at this. Yuki Mori condition red. Shades of her dad. Big code red Daddy Connolly, who will be challenging Charles Schultz for the celestial title at Revelations. DDT on the chair by Yuki Mori. One, no. And a DDT by Sarah now. CJU with the chair. Suplex by Sarah. And, oh, CJU went in for that chair. And now CJU with the strikes. 
what a win it would be for her to get into her first revelations. All of these women, to be honest with you, all of these women would love to go to Revelations and compete for the Rising Star Championship. One of the most sought after titles in DCA. It has led some of the best to success here in DCA. Most notably, Carmen Cortez held the Rising Star title. Didn't hold it for too long, but right after that, she springboarded straight to the DCA Wildcats title cover now so you got to think for all these women the rising star title is definitely a springboard to success and they want to get there and now CJU look at this very nice athleticism there Raven picked up the chair but CJU's not having any of it there's a belly to belly by Sarah on the floor under Yuki Mori CJU gets a drop kick. And now Raven's got the chair, but CJU is rolling to the ropes. I don't think it's going to help her, and it did not. And it's still not helping her. Abby now with a clothesline sending Raven all the way to the floor. And CJU now going to take advantage. There's a big Pele. Cover. Two, and Raven breaks it up, but that could have been a three count. There's a suplex by Sarah. Been broken up by Yuki Mori. That could have been a three count. And now look at this. Yuki Mori has got her on her shoulders and drops her head first. Had two, had a pin and a submission at once. Tiltable DDT, no. CJU gets dropped by Yuki Mori. Raven now on to... Sophia. Sophia, look at this. Drop kick to the side of the head. Sarah dropping Yuki Mori. Two. No. I think Abby broke that up. But Sarah was a second away from going to Revelations. And now Raven's got a kendo stick running around and drops Yuki Mori with it twice what an insane match this has been we're down to CJU and Sarah Miller on the inside of the ring everybody else is on the outside this could be an advantage for Sarah or CJU if they could get a pin right now everybody else is distracted there's another suplex Abby running in and inadvertently knocked into the referee and that's delayed the pinfall. That was, might have been the only thing that saved anyone else's chances of going to the revelations at this point. Big clothesline by Sarah. Sarah is on a roll here tonight. I'd say Sarah might have the best shot so far right now because she has been absolutely killing it in this match. Yuki Mori with the kendo stick. I don't think this was part of Oseko's training by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think Yuki Mori really cares right now. She just wants to go to Revelations, and this is how much she wants it. But then again, this is how much all these women want it. Look at this. CJU went for a double underhook, but no, Sarah with a lariat. I'm telling you, Sarah Miller, look out for her. If she doesn't win this match, even if she does, look out for her next season for sure because she has been absolutely on fire. Sarah now with Abby Lawrence. And look at this, Sophia Yell and, and Sarah Miller teaming up on Abby. Oh, and Sarah with the cover on Abby. No, Sophia dropped Yuki Mori. And I don't think she knew that pin was happening until the very last second. And there's just some chairs flying everywhere on the outside of the ring. Sarah tried to go for a pin on Yuki Mori, didn't connect with it. Oh, look at this. Another suplex by Sarah. How many suplexes is Sarah going to give people? Yuki Mori kicked out, but these suplexes, they are coming from all sides. As you see, another one by Sarah. 
right now. Raven neckbreaker. Yuki Mori trying to get a quick pin on Sarah. Uh-oh. And Sophia now going to kick to the midsection. This has been a crazy match. But obviously, when you're talking about Revelations 9, that's exactly what you got to do. Anything it takes. Abby now. Look at this. Abby with cattle mutilation locked in onto Sophia. And Sarah breaking it up. And now Raven. Oh, and the referee got taken out. Yuki Mori did not see where she was going. So many women in the ring and inadvertently knocked down Ashley. And I guess this is a bit of a break for her now for all these women because there's no one to make a pinfall. There's submission by Raven, but it's not, it doesn't matter because the referee is down. Oh, and Abby just trucked Yuki Mori right there. Ashley finally back up. Wait, there's a pin by Sarah. Again, it is just absolute pandemonium right now. Sarah with another suplex. Yuki Mori now going for something. Sarah broke it up. And now look, wait, wait a minute, CJ, you backslide. Backslide, only a one count. And now Sarah, look out, Yuki. Yuki Mori, German suplex. Uh, not even a one count. Yuki Mori, that resiliency kicking in, but it didn't help her there. Oh, no. Oh, no. On the chair. Sarah dropped her on the chair. Cover. That's got to be it. And CJU kicks out. Abby went for a pin. She kicked out. It is craziness right now. But only one of these women can move on to Revelations. Abby. Leg drop onto Yuki Mori. Look at this. Stunned on Millionaire by Raven. Abby trying to kick in. Trying to get an advantage. Uh oh, wait a minute. Yuki Mori, look at this. Lamaji Straw Cradle onto Raven. Only a one count. And Red Widow Driver Kick. But Abby right there. She knew there was a pin that was about to happen, and she was smart to stop it. There's a clothesline. And now, wait a minute. Look at this. Another La Magistral Cradle onto, onto Yuki Mori. Abby trying to get out, and it didn't work. Yuki Mori wins it. Abby tried to break it up, but she could not do it. At Yuki Mori held on like her life was dependent on it. And now we know the fifth and final person in that Rising Star title match. Yuki Mori held on to that Lamaji Straw Cradle like it was the last match of her career. Look at this. Abby just took one second and look at this. Missing that. She was disoriented. She couldn't break that up. And Luki Mori held on to that tighter than she's ever held on to a pin in her life. And now we know the five women in the Dead Woman's Five. Heather Ray defends against Mia Nishimura, Maxine Rose, Kim Possible, and Yuki Mori. Who will leave with the Rising Star title? We will find out at Revelations 9. But Yuki Mori has earned her spot. And now, can she break through? Can she do it? She won last year because of the rules in that match with her mother, but can she make it two in a row and this time leave Revelations as a champion? We will find out in just a few weeks' time.
by Mimi Ishibashi making no bones about it, being perfectly crystal clear about how she feels about this entire Trixie and Akira situation. Obviously not happy that her title match that she thought she was going to have at Revelations technically was taken away because of this entire situation. She's not happy about it. I can't blame her that, if she, that she's not happy about it. But right now, we are getting into another qualifying match. It is the final one, or the only one rather, to decide who will move on to the Fatal 4-Way Ladder Match at Revelations 9 for the Tag Team Titles. And if you know that music, you know who this is. Lexi Gates on the right, Rianne Starr on the left. One of the most accomplished teams in all of virtual wrestling. The Hated Gates. These two women have been a team for many many years now and they've grown to have a close like sisterhood type bond between them as well they were polar opposites still are kind of in a way polar opposites they were on their own separate paths when they were in Wildcats Unleashed together back in 2017 but then they met they became a team and to say that they have gone on to success as a team that eventually translated to success in singles is an understatement. Lexi Gates, current women's champion, if I'm not mistaken, Rianne, former women's champion, two-time Wildcats tag team champions here in DCA. They have made a mark in tag team wrestling. To say that they are not one of the most accomplished teams in the game would be that would be a lie honestly these two women know what they're doing when it comes to tag team work and they could be one moment away one win away from possibly challenging for the Wildcats tag titles again and maybe becoming a three time champion three-time tag team champions. And here comes team number two. One of the newest teams to the Wildcats roster. The Punch Girls, Leandra on the left. Eliza on the right. And these two have made... These two have made quite an impression, mostly on the... On the Bombshell Club. But now... Not only are they in there with the Bombshell Club, they're in there with three other, with two other teams too. And they could make their first revelations. But to do that, two other people got to fit, they got to, they got to uh, face two other teams including this team and here comes former Wildcats tag team champions Laura Riot and Brittany Evans, the Bombshell Club. And you know, 
Maxine Rose is cheering these two on because she could, Maxine I'm talking about, could bring t gold to the bombshell club like she said she was going to do if she wins the Dead Woman's Five. If the bombshell club win this match, they're going to the ladder match and they could become two-time Wildcats Tag Team Champions. They have had an up and down season. They won the tag titles last season at Revelations, lost it to the Hated Gates. Then the Hated Gates lost them to the Succubus Club. And now both of those teams are in this match. But now that also includes this wild card team right here. That I never thought would ever be a tag team. I did not expect this, but that's what we're getting right here. And here comes the strongest in the world, the new standard, Miss 8 star, Sekai de Ichiban, whatever you call her. Just remember to call her by her name, Sakura Hagiwara. A woman who has done pretty much everything here in DCA. Wildcats champion, goddess champion, fever champion. The only title, the only major title she has not held is the Wildcats Tag Team Championship. Since she is uh, technically not... Um, eligible for the rising star title so with that said if she wins this match and if she wins the tag team titles at revelations 9 she will be a grand slam champion in this company and that is something sakura hagiwara if she does that will put her in the upper echelon if she she's already there let's be honest she's already there but if she wins the tag titles, if she gets through here and wins the tag titles, that's going to say a whole lot about her career trajectory here in DCA. But now... Here comes her tag partner who, a few years ago, if you told me that this was going to happen, if you told me a few years ago that, thi that this woman would be Sakura's tag team partner, I'd call you a bold-faced liar. Here she comes. The Zero Fighter, Reiko Hinamoto. Again, this this is an un, this is an un, unreal scenario. Unreal scenario right now between Reiko and Sakura teaming up to possibly challenge for the Wildcats tag team title. But can they get through this match? That's the question. Can they even be a team? And here we go. More chaos. It's going to be hard to call. But at the same time, I'll do whatever it takes to call this as accurately as possible. So forgive me if uh, it's a little all over the place, but again, there's eight women in this. There are there are eight women in this thing. And 
now a pin by Sakura, only a one count. Crowd is chanting, this is awesome already, and the match just started. It's now covered by Lexi, and then gets kicked right in the face. It is going to be crazy, but that's what the road to Revelations is, craziness. DDT and dropped by, and Reiko gets dropped. But I'll tell you, that's what you got to do when it comes to revelations. Reiko and Sakura just waiting on the, in the ring. Waiting for their opportunity. And now they're going on the outside. Now everybody's on the outside. And this is not going to be well here. Especially considering that you got to get somebody in the ring and pin them. Uh-oh. Look at this. German suplex on the floor as we are down to Sakura and uh, Rianne inside the ring. And now Lexi's in. And now both of the hated gates are in the ring. Now, oh, here's a sleeper hold by Re onto Reiko. Lexi holding guard. And this could be it. Oh, like, look. Brittany now with a submission of her own. Sakura breaks out of hers. And now everybody's back in the ring. Again, this is this is nuts right now. But this is exactly what to, this is exactly what we expected. Just all out chaos when you're talking about Revelations 9. And now on the outside of the ring, Eliza gets trucked by Sakura. Again, this is going to be a little too hard to call, but I'll do my best. But coming up after this matchup, oh, wait a minute, DDT by Sakura. After this matchup, it will be our main event as Bad Amy challenges Marie Connor for the Solar Star, the Queens of Wrestling Solar Star Championship. And this time we will have a winner. Unlike the last time, there will be no outside interference, no fake Amy's, none of that. We're going to have a winner and a loser. Also, run down some of the card for Revelations 9 tonight before the main event. Of course, you know that after what? Oh, it's been covered by Rianne. This could be it. No. After the uh, last episode of Takedown, we know that there will be a two out of three falls match at Revelations 9 between Malik Brown and James Needham that will hopefully end that rivalry once and for all. We already know... Claudio Dragonheart and Varl Greythorn in the last man standing match. That's happening at Revelations. I talked about it earlier. Charles Schultz. Charles Schultz and uh, all item DDT. 
Charles Schultz will be defending the Celestial Championship against Michael Connolly. That's happening at Revelations. We know that there's going to be two ladder matches, one for the men's takedown tag team titles and then for the Wildcats tag titles as this uh, match here will qualify for that. The Dead Man's Five for the Burnout title and the Dead Woman's Five for the Rising Star title at Revelations. The Battle Pro World title, that match will be made official on the next takedown as TJ Kennedy will take on Gorilla Black. The winner of that match will face James Dark at Revelations for the Battle Pro World title. We know there's going to be the No Holds Barred match between Morgan Rancroft and Haley Jonas. We heard from Morgan earlier tonight. Apparently on the next, uh, oh, excuse me, we got Rako and Eliza in the ring. And it seems like it's down to these two. Everyone else fighting on the outside. Got the first War Games match in DCA history going down at Revelations. Team Carmen versus Team Michko. And that match, I got a big announcement about that match coming up during the main event. And of course, the Wildcats title triple threat. Ovana Morgan, Destiny Williams, and Faith Connors covered by Eliza. Schoolgirl roll up two count. And then we have Tyler Parks and Dante Styles for the DCA world title. Jaden Starr and Zach Stone. Helena Cell, Eve Heron, and Aubrey Williams. Jesus, what a super kick! And Eliza is down. And it may be over. Angel dive! The cover! One, two, and three. Reiko and Soccer are going to Revelations. Wow. Eliza had no idea what just hit her until it was too late. Look at this. Bang! Everybody else brawling on the outside of the ring had no clue what was going on in the ring. And that allowed Reiko to hit the angel dive. And now we have our fatal four-way ladder match at Revelations 9 locked in. Betsy Chairshot and Amy Lynn will defend the titles against the Lotus Collective, Godsong, and Sakura Hagiwara and Reiko Hinamoto. Who will lead with the Wildcats tag team titles in this ladder match? We're going to find out in just a few weeks' time, but right now, Sakura and Reiko are celebrating their big win here tonight. But coming up next, not only our main event, not only are we going to run down the Revelations card so far, but from what I understand, we're going to hear from the pretty little psycho, Eve Heron, right after this break. You do not want to miss that, folks. Oh, wait a minute.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the biggest mega event in Call Wrestling. This is Call All-Stars 16. Well, you heard it there, Faith Connors making it clear she wants that Wildcats championship. And next episode, all three women will be here in the building. So you're going to want to tune in for that. And also, I'm hearing word that we will hear from Eve Heron immediately after this next match for the Solar Star title. But first, we got a rundown to go through of some of the matches on the Revelations card for the two-night event. You are listening to Shambles by Bandmade. They are the it's the official theme of Revelations, and you can get it wherever you get your music. And we're gonna run down just some of the card for Revelations 9. Fatal four-way for the fever title. Selena Zeta defends against Miyako Yukimura, Kenzie Cray, and Suzuka for the fever championship at Revelations 9. Who's walking out as champion? No holds barred, Morgan Raincroft, Haley Jonas. This rivalry will end at Revelations. Who is the top woman? Who's the big dog? Who's the baddest bitch in the, on the roster? We'll find out at Revelations. The first ever War Games match in DCA history. Team Carmen, Team Michko. You see the teams and you see the captains. Who's going to be the ultimate winner in this matchup? Helen Cell, Aubrey Williams, Eve Heron. If you thought their match at Redemption was nuts, just imagine what these two women are going to do to each other with a cell closing them in. I shudder to think, folks. Celestial Championship on the line. Charles Schultz, the living nightmare, defends against Michael Connolly. Michael looking for his first VW title. Can he finally get it at Revelations? 
Last man standing, Claudio Dragonheart, Varl Greythorn. The last time these two men met, the last two times, there was no winner. There has to be one at Revelations between these two men. Zack Stone, Jaden Starr, this one's personal. Jaden took out Zack after he lost the world title at Redemption. Now Zack is looking for revenge, not just for himself, but for someone he's close to. Wildcats title triple threat. Ovana Morgan defends against Faith Connors and Destiny Williams. The last time this happened at Revelation 6, Ovana walked out as champion. Will that happen again or will we have a new champion? And then this match. Tyler Parks defends the DCA world title against Dante Styles. Both men won it. Only one can get it. Who will leave as the top man on takedown? We're going to find out at Revelations. And that is just like I said, half the card. There's still a lot left to go to be confirmed. And we will confirm it by the end of this episode, next episode. And on the end of take that by the end of the next takedown. But ladies and gentlemen, coming up next, the Solar Star titles on the line. Marie Connor defends against Bad Amy. In a match that, that didn't have a winner last time, but it will this time. Three, two, one. The last time Bad Amy and Marie Connor fought, it was a hell of a match. But it was a lot of controversy near the end of it. Reiko got involved. The other Amy got involved. Sakura got involved. Godsong got involved. There's none of that tonight. Now that Bad Amy considers herself, I guess, out of Godsong's hair for now. But I'll get into that during this match. She's got her focus back on what it was all on all along, and that's winning championships and continuing to add to her collection in a, in a sense. And she's looking for the Solar Star title here tonight against a woman who has defended that title everywhere. DCA, UWL, Madhouse. Marie Connor has been a fighting champion since she won that Solar Star title at Prestige last year. But now, she's got Bad Amy once again. But can she leave the same way she's walking in? That's the question. Here she comes. The Solar Star Champion, Marie Connor, who has held that championship for the last six months. She has been a fighting champion and has held that title with honor, with pride, and has defended it every chance she's gotten. But can she, Iron Wrestler Technical, can she once again defend that title that was the purpose of this solar star title to defend 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 and solar star title right the solar star title reign of marie connor she has done just that she has defended it and defended it and defended it but now can she do it one more time against bad amy this time there will be a winner there will be no other Amy's there will be no God song there will be no Lotus Collective there was no Reiko or Sakura everyone is banned from ringside for this matchup we will see who truly deserves to hold that solar star title by the end of this thing bad Amy and the champion Marie Connor 
confident as always. But who will leave with this championship? We're going to find out in just a few moments, folks. There you see the belt. Handing it over to Ashley. Of course, with Prestige coming up. You know, both of these women want to head into that event in just a few months in July as the Solar Star Champion. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. This is your main event for Wildcats episode 212. It is Bad Amy challenging Marie Connor for the Queens of Wrestling Solar Star Championship. Both of these women know what it know what the other is capable of they've been in the ring together before like i said episode 206 they fought and that match led to a no that match was a no contest this time there must be a winner obviously disqualifications count out still in effect but this match will continue until we have a clear decisive winner and that's why we said that there is no outside interference in this matchup. No other woman, no other entity can get involved in this matchup on behalf of the other. If it is on behalf of Marie, she loses the title. If it's on behalf of, of Bad Amy, Marie retains. So we are going to have a winner and we're going to have a loser. Marie sending... And Amy, you do not want to get Amy on the outside of the ring in a match like this. That Amy, Amy's wheelhouse is on the outside of the ring. And Marie knows that. She's got to keep this into a technical wrestling match. And she can very much do that. There's a cover off the snap suplex. Only a one count. But like, yeah, like I was saying before, Bad Amy, I guess she considers her time with God Song and that whole deal pretty much done for the time being after it was revealed cover one two no after it was revealed that akira yukimura was the leader of god song and she was just as surprised and perplexed as everybody else has been about that but now she's focused again back on championship gold and particularly this one that she challenged for and it was a no contest She's challenged for a championship here in DCA before. She challenged for the Goddess title at Proving Ground 9 in that hellacious death match with Trixie, but obviously was unsuccessful. And speaking of Trixie, from what I understand, the Goddess champion will be here next episode. Like I told you, it was gonna, I told you it was gonna be a big episode next episode, the last one before Revelations. Trixie will be here and from what I understand she will be expecting an answer from Akira for her challenge for her match at Revelations 9 for the Goddess Championship she Beatrix wanted oh, wait a minute, over the outside by a as goes Amy Beatrix wanted Akira to put up something in return for a match with Trixie for the Goddess Championship. But so far we have heard nothing from Akira at all about the challenge. We've heard nothing about what she's planning to wager for a Goddess Championship match in, in what Beatrix calls a true death match. That it would be the stipulation if that match was made official, but we have not heard from Akira at all. And Trixie, from what I understand, will be on the next episode to pretty much demand that challenge, that, that wager, because she's been waiting and waiting and waiting, and we've heard nothing. Meanwhile, there's a figure eight on the floor by Marie trying to wear out the legs of Bad Amy, which is a very smart strategy, but I doubt that I doubt that Marie wants a count out here. She wants to beat she wants to beat Bad Amy fair and square. But as you see, Reverie's trying to beg Marie to let go of the hold. And what every time she doesn't, then where she keeps counting, but that's just making her hold the hold this even longer. You see the slow cadence of the count by 
Ashley. This, this might end in a double count out, and if that happens, I guarantee Lucinda's probably going to probably going to restart it. And oh, look at that. Nine and three quarters, both women back inside the ring, but a knee to the back. And now look at this, Marie going right back to that figure four. Didn't even waste a moment. Right as Amy got back in the ring, back into the figure eight. That is a very nicely done strategy when it comes to when it comes to Marie Connor trying to wear out the legs of Bad Amy. And that's gonna wear down Amy through the entire match. Look at this, you see you're blocking that and right back to the legs. That is Amy's Achilles heel, no pun intended, is now the damage that Marie has done to the leg is becoming a factor here and if she doesn't have her knee she doesn't have her leg she can't hit the KYS at all or not to the effect that she'd like and that's going to be in Marie's advantage through this match as now look at this oh, right into the turnbuckle and an uppercut sending Amy down and now a hip attack in the corner Cover. Two. No. And this has been an excellent strategy by Marie through this match. Work on the legs. Slow Amy down to a crawl. And then just take advantage wherever you can. But Amy now. Look at that. That kick was not as effective because of the damage to the legs. You can see Amy slowing down ever so slightly. As now look at this. Is she going to try and go for a dive here? Now look at this. Marie with a back elbow to counter it. And it was sent on. Amy is just not in the right frame of mind right now. Two. No. Amy is just a half a step slower than usual because of the damage that Marie has done to the legs. And this was the same strategy she used in her last match with Amy. But now Amy trying to come back with a sent on of her own. Trying to get some little bits of offense going. Trying to gain some momentum. Only getting a two count. But you got to believe that knee. Look at that. See, again, a half a step slower is bad Amy right now. And she has got to realize that. But I don't think it's helping too much. Because every time Amy tries to get an advantage, Marie is right there to slow her down again. Iron Wrestler technical, she very much is. Now, oh, wait. Again, she might have been going for that left leg again, but look at this. Amy with an insecurity. And that might be the opening she needs to get back in this thing. Now, what's she doing here? It's sending her into the barricade. Amy trying to do anything it takes now. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Cord Buster GTS using the right knee, thankfully. Amy trying to get an advantage back. It's now running in the ring and running back out to break the count up. She knows she can't win the championship on a count out. And now, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Falcon Arrow on the ramp. And that has got to deal some damage to Marie Connor now that Amy can take advantage of. And that's exactly what she's doing, getting her back inside the ring. Amy now. Look at this. Striking away on Marie. And now Amy trying to get some feeling back in the leg. But again, you can see just a step slower. Even now, exploder suplex. Quickly into another cover. Two. Only a two count. And this has been, like I said, an excellent game plan by Marie Connor in this matchup. Just trying to do what she what she did last time. She's not, she's not refining things. She's not 
trying to do something flashy, not trying to do something out of the blue. She is very much continuing the same strategy she did last time, and that is wearing her down little by little. Cover off the senton. Again, two count. And it has been working. Amy has been a half a step behind. But look at this now. Big form in the back of the head. But you see, she's trying to she's trying to go to the top rope. She's trying to get some kind of offense. But oh look at this. Amy. No, got caught. Again got caught. Off the ropes now, Irish whip. And look at this. Good lord! Pop up cutter by Marie. That might be it. Two. No, Amy kicks out. But Marie has got to be wondering what is she going to have to do. Now look at this. She's got her. She's got her in her submission. Her signature submission hold. She's got those legs locked up, but Amy able to fight out of it. I went for it, something there and gets an uppercut. Amy has been on the back foot for a while now, and that has got to be what Marie was hoping for in this matchup to try and slow her down. Look at this. Amy with a lifting reverse DDT. And now, leg drop to the back of the head. And Amy trying to string some offense together now. Double foot stomp, no. Look at this, O'Connor roll. Two. And Amy reverses it into one of her own. Schoolgirl by Marie. Two. No. Back and forth this match goes. And now, uh-oh. Going for the hip attack again, and she gets all of it. And now Marie going up top. Marie, foot stomp of her own, doesn't connect. And Amy with the kick. Out of nowhere. One. Two. No. My God. I thought, wait, cover by Amy again. No. I thought that was going to be it, but Amy just could not get the win there. She hit that out of nowhere, and it was still not enough. Look at this slice. Oh, yeah, I sliced bread. And another leg drop. And another one. Just doing anything it takes at this point. One, two, only a two again. And now Marie trying to come back. But Amy continuing to pour the pressure on. As you see, she's look, see, she couldn't even run off the ropes. The damage to that leg, just too much. As now, uh oh, oh no, she's got the heel hook in, but no. Amy's foot underneath the bottom rope, and that might have been the only thing that saved her right there. And Marie has to realize that. Ah, oh, kick to the head. And now Amy, more strikes, sending Marie down. Cover again. Two, two and a half. Marie gets the shoulder up. Uh, rolling through Marie now, look at this small package. A 
A small package. One, two, no. You got to think at some point, exhaustion is going to set in for Marie. And that damage to the leg is going to set in for Amy. If it hasn't already, sent on from the top. Cover again. One, two, no. Again, this is for the rise. This is for the Solar Star. Excuse me, Solar Star Championship. Amy, DDT reversal. Just a snap DDT. Two, no again. Marie kicking out. Again on the next episode. On the next episode of Wildcats. The goddess champion Beatrix Decker will be here. Faith Connors, Ovana Morgan, and Destiny Williams will be here. Heather Ray will be in action. We're going to have a six-woman tag match. Oh, big leg drop. Cover. One, two, no. We're going to have a six-woman tag team match to determine the War Games advantage at Revelations. Amy waiting for Marie to get up. And look at this, went for the Meteor and that may have been the, that may have been the death blow right there. And there it is, the heel hook is locked in. That Meteor might have been her death call there. As now she's got that heel hook locked in tight and there is nowhere to go, she's in the center of the ring. This could be it. Marie could retain right here. She is dead center in the center of the ring. Oh, but kicked her way free. But you can look at look at the damage. Look at the damage done. And now again, look at this. Back to the heel hook. Excuse me, back to the figure four into the figure eight. Locking it in again. My God, this has been an excellent strategy by Marie. An excellent strategy. She is wearing down Bad Amy's legs little by little here in this matchup. And it has been working. And Amy again having to fight her way out of it. But you can, you can clearly see the damage being done. Went for the chop again. Kick blocked. Again, Marie, look at that. Kicks her leg and then kicks her in the head. Cover. Two. No. Again, it's just a perfect strategy. There's no other way to put it. It's a perfect strategy right now by Marie Connor. Just continuing to work on the legs. I don't know what more Marie can, oh my God. Hip attack from the apron. Just charged at her with it and sending her back inside the ring I I well, she's got to do something Amy has got to do something to get back in this matchup but I don't know what but she see again just continuing to work on the leg I don't know what else she's going to have to do another senton from the top Amy is clearly Oh, Amy Carter. Amy Carter and drops her down. Cover. 2. 
No! And now Amy just kicking her right in the face. Oh, with a super kick, doesn't connect Amy. Again, kick, and another one. Oh, missed the senton. Amy now off the ropes, and drops her with a kick again. And now this could be the beginning of the end. Amy, um, again that kick not able to connect, and that one does. Right to the bad leg. And now Marie lining her up. No! Just shot her right in the back of the head, and now look at this. Another Enzigiri. And now what is this? Just slamming her head into the mat. Amy now. Leg drop, no. Kick, no. Amy, again, just can't get an offensive string of moves together. Marie now again kicks that leg out. What more does it take? The senton again, unable to connect and a kick to the back of the head. Two, and Marie again kicks out. What a match right here, folks. This is exactly what this title's all about. Double foot stomp to the back and the back of the head. But Marie is still fighting with everything she's got left. And now Marie trying to go up top again, but Amy rolling to the apron. Maybe a smart idea, or maybe not. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Good God! Back suplex on the apron. Marie Connor might be moments away from retaining this championship here, folks. Uh-oh, no. I may have spoken too soon because Amy is continuing to fight. Off the ropes and a big kick. And now it's Marie trying to retreat to the ropes. What a match we are having here tonight on Wildcats right now, folks. And this is just the second to last episode of the season. And now Marie White dropped her right on the back of her head. And I mean dropped her on it. And now from behind, Amy with a knee. Cover. Two. No. Amy now again missing the leg drop. And Amy rolling to the safety of the ropes, or at least that's what she thinks. Big suplex. And it's now Marie going up top again. Amy in trouble. Amy. Oh, she got caught again. And this time, hung up on the top. What is Amy thinking here? Oh, wait a minute. Amy, oh, wait a minute. What the hell? Oh, my God. Brain Buster on the top. And Marie wisely rolling to the ropes to avoid a pinfall. But Marie might be in trouble here. There's the headbutt. And now, Amy with the distance. She could be thinking KYS right now. And if she does, it could be over. Oh, there's a knee. Marie is down. Amy stalking her. 
Looking for her opportunity now going up to Brett's rope. And again missing the leg drop. Shot to the back of the head. Marie, half Nelson suplex. And now Amy is the one retreating to the corner. Marie now, what is this? What is Marie thinking here? Marie with a Frankensteiner. That's not, that's out of nowhere. Marie with a senton. No, Amy just managed to move just ever so slightly. And Marie trying to move Amy, but can't do it. Oh, kick to the head. That might have been the opening Amy needs. Amy with a big headbutt again. This has been a competitive matchup between these two women, but that's what this championship means to both of these ladies. They want the Solar Star title so bad. They are willing to put themselves through hell to become the Solar Star champion, or in Marie's case, to keep it. Missing the senton again. Amy from behind went for the kick, doesn't connect. Marie now, big uppercut. And now Marie, uh-oh, look at this. Marie, half Boston Crab. Back to that leg that she's worked on all match. But Amy able to spin her way out of it. Leg drop. And now Amy stalking her. Double foot stop. No. Marie kicks her leg out again. Off the ropes now. Marie, what's she thinking? Kicking her again. And Amy, look at that, rolling her way out of the ring. Whether that was by instinct or on purpose, it saves her a few seconds, but Marie is going right back after her. Marie, oh, look at that, oh! Drop toe hold. Whatever Amy was trying to run after her for, it didn't work. Big elbow to the midsection. And, oh, there's that tornado kick she was looking for earlier. Quickly into another cover and only a two. What more do these women have to do to each other to win this matchup? Oh, look at this. Oh, drops her and stacks her up for a pin. Two and three quarters. We almost had a retention of the title right there. Senton doesn't connect. Amy with a kick to the back of the head. And now Marie again rolling to the corner to avoid a pin. But Amy is staying on her. And that is a wise strategy if you're Amy. Uh-oh, what is this? Amy. Amy. Superplex. Into the deal. But she knows she can't win with it. So she goes for a leg drop. Because everyone kicks out of the deal, obviously. One. Two. Again, can't get three. And Amy is frustrated. And in a way, you could probably tell that Marie is frustrated, too, because she thought this match could have been over by now. But Amy will not stay down. Marie. Two points for Marie. And now Marie off the ropes. Went for the senton again. And an elbow to the back of the head sends Marie down. Marie now, look at this. Cross body. Adjusted in midair for it. Two, and again, not enough. I, I don't know what it's going to take anymore. I honestly don't know. I can't tell you. Marie now. Look at this. O'Connor roll. Two. No, one. Because Amy able to counter it. Two. No, a one again. Because Marie counters. Two. Amy quickly up. Amy, oh no. KYS, no. Marie able to counter. 
Amy got out of the way there, and there KYS out of nowhere. She did not see it coming. Amy going for this kick again, and she nails all of it. And now Amy looking to finish it off. Amy looking to finish it off here. KYS! But Amy, Marie still getting up. And another one. That has got to be it. But no, Marie gets her foot under the bottom rope. And Amy is beside herself. She waited, she was looking for the KYS all match long. And when she finally hits it, it was not enough. Amy now trying to get a run up and telling Marie this is it, it is over. But Marie catching her with a small package again. This has been one of the best matches all season, folks. And maybe one of the best matches of the year and the year's just started. Marie will not let this title reign in tonight. Oh, look at this. Marie, look at this. Look at this submission on the outside. Again to those legs. And Amy is in trouble once again. Marie now. What's she thinking here? Marie with a hip attack. No! Amy out of the way of it. And sending Marie back inside the ring. Oh, shot. Drop kick. Amy again in the driver's seat, but now Marie able to spin her way out, or power her way out, rather. And now she's looking for the submission again, and she's got it locked in. She has got it locked in. And Amy has nowhere to go, but Amy continuing to fight. Big shot. No, Marie countering. And a kick to the knee. Again, remember next episode, War Games Advantage match between Team Carmen and Team Michko. Ariane, Sophie Jones, Revy, and Ruby Malone against Danny Rojas, Warren Richfield, and Cassandra Kane. There's a small package, only a two count. Heather Ray will be here. Trixie Decker will be here. Alvana, Destiny, and Faith will be here. Big, ma big matches, big night on the next Wildcats. As now, what the hell? Marie, oh my God! Marie missing that senton. Shot right into the, into the barricade. And Marie is all out of sorts right now. She landed on the ground hard. And Amy stalking Marie. Oh, went for the Savat kick. Doesn't connect. O'Connor roll again. Oh, one count. No, Marie reversed. Oh, one count again. Marie. Oh, missed the drop kick. Oh, went for the Lariat and got it. Oh, out of the corner. Ducked underneath. Oh, my God, what a kick. She did not see that coming at all. And she's not going to see this either. KYS again. One, two, and we have a new Solar Star Champion. Oh my God.
What a match! What a match! But in the end of the day, we have a new Solar Star Champion and her name is Bad Amy. I don't know what this is going to mean for the rest of Queens of Wrestling, but Bad Amy is now the Solar Star Champion. Pitiful creature. Are you still upset about what I did to you back at DCA Redemption? It's adorable how you just can't handle defeat like a grown up. I guess some people never learn, right? You want another shot at glory, Aubrey? Bring it on! You must really have a thing for pain and humiliation, huh? It's like you're begging me to injure your other eye. But hey, who am I to say no to a good time? <laughs> so let's make it official, Aubrey. At DCA Revelations, it's gonna be you and me locked inside that twisted playground they call Hell in the Cell. Get ready for a wild ride, because once we're in there, there's no turning back. And trust me, I've got some seriously twisted plans for you. Get ready to meet your worst nightmare, Aubrey, because this little psycho is ready to play again! <laughs> Come to my